This is the Personal Finance Show. Hi, I'm Bo Humphreys, and this is The Personal Finance Show. It's October 2017, and I'm at the Cybos Global Financial Services Conference in Toronto. I post something about the conference on Facebook, and my friend Jessica Morehouse comments that she'll be at the conference tomorrow. I had just found out that she would be participating in this payments race. Think of it as the amazing race for money nerds. It turned out that the race was going to start the next day from the conference that I was already attending. I was able to get an interview with all five contestants in the race, Jessica being the only Canadian. All five racers had to make it from Toronto to Las Vegas in a week using different methods of payment. There was Bitcoin, gold, contactless ring and Apple Pay, cash, and then Jessica had to use a chip and pin credit card. Maybe you're thinking that's easy. You can pay for everything with a chip and pin credit card in North America, right? Well, that's what the race is all about. The organizers didn't do a trial run from Toronto to Vegas and try all of those methods to see if it was possible. The race was created to find out if it is possible. So Jessica and the other contestants headed out into the unknown to see whether it would be a breeze or if they would run into obstacles along the way. Jessica joined me a few weeks after the race to tell her side of the story. Okay, Jessica, welcome uh, to the show Thanks for coming back and talking about uh, the payments race. This this sounds like it was really fun and also stressful and also yeah. a little bit uh, insane. Would you say oh, yeah. those things? Yeah. Like as a, you know, I can't even remember our, you know, initial conversation at Cybos because it was just so such a, I mean, I was just like out of my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? It was so nice to see a friendly face. But you couldn't, and then you're and interviewing you couldn't get me. in. You you were like, and I couldn't get in. Oh my gosh, yeah, I was messaging you, and uh, it was and like everybody would be like, let me in. Yeah, it was like Fort Knox, and I'm like, I'm here for the race. They told me to come here. They're like, sorry, without a badge, you're not allowed in. I'm like, but I'm supposed to be here. And then of <laughs> course, it's like I've never met anyone from the race uh i've just been communicating with them over uh email and phone so i'm like oh my gosh wouldn't this be the craziest ruse someone like just made this whole yeah thing it's up. all just there is no race <laughs> the, this is the yeah. race it's yeah. fake it's they just want to see my face trying to get into this you know uh conference not getting in but no it, it it was such a crazy day it was lovely meeting all the other racers and the race organizers after, you know, talking with them for a while. And, uh, and it was kind of cool being like the, for, you know, the, yeah, the first and the only North American racer of the payments race, everyone else was from the UK. So I kind of felt like that's kind of neat represent, you know? Um, but yeah, overall, like looking back, it was like hands down. I mean, there's only a little bit more time left in 2017, but it, it has, has absolutely been like the most, memorable the most adventurous kind of the coolest thing i've probably done all year well it's such a unique thing right mm -hmm. so so let's start from the beginning right so you had chip and pin yeah and what exactly does that mean that you could use to pay for things sure so yeah a lot of people are like oh well that's just credit card that's easy no no right, no, right. no yeah uh basically i can only use uh, a credit card with uh, a chip on it which is fine because i'm canadian and all credit cards have they that all now. do now yeah Exactly. And so, but whenever I wanted to purchase something, I would actually have to go to, you know, payment terminal um, and, you know, stick in my credit card into that kind of credit card slot and type in my pin. There was no way for me to tap. I couldn't do that. That's called ca contactless. So that was actually another racer's uh, uh, payment method. I think Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't swipe. Uh, and that was uh, very difficult because everywhere in America, you can swipe your credit card and pay for whatever you want. But, uh, and lots of them, Lots of these places that I went to, stores, restaurants, airports, uh, they even had the, you know, kind of payment terminal where you could stick in your chip card and, and put in your pin. But most of them, they're like, oh, sorry, it doesn't work like that. It only accepts swipe. 
which doesn't make any sense. So they clearly didn't set up their things properly. They don't want to pay whatever extra fee they have in order to accept chip and pin. So it was uh, it was a struggle. <laughs> is, that, is that what you found out? That, is it extra costs or are they just like just behind the times with the new no, technology? No, I think there is. Uh, I think there is an extra cost just to set it up, which is why I think the, there always kind of will be, if you have, uh, if you kind of make it, you know, very convenient for your customers to kind of pay in lots of different methods, like, you know, contactless, chip and pin, swipe, whatever. I think there is always a, some extra kind of cost. I have no idea what it is, but the, you know, idea is if you make it more accessible to, you know, different types of customers with different payment methods, you know, it'll improve your business. It kind of makes sense. I think that is why it is very easy to pay with whatever you want in Canada. Um, but in the States, especially when, even though like I honestly was going to main, you know, major cities in the States, I think a lot of, you know, smaller places, a mom and pop shops and whatever, there's like no way that they would, you know, go to all that hassle because it just wasn't, you know, worth it to them. Well, that's the thing about credit cards in general, right? A lot of people don't realize that the merchant, the the mm-hmm. vendor, the retailer pays a lot more for credit card processing. So you go and yeah. you swipe or you or you use your chip and pin or you're tapping and it's actually costing the vendor a lot more. So when you go to a retail store and they say, uh, you know, only debit or cash. And you yeah. say, well, that's inconvenient for me. Well, they're they're making a conscious decision to save money. But like you said, you want to make it easy for anybody to come in and pay. Mm-hmm. And that's what this yeah. whole race was about, right? Absolutely. And that, yeah, that, that was kind of like the, like the main point was just to see in different countries, like how, how do people get around? And it was interesting because what really opened my eyes uh, after the race was, wow, I I didn't realize how, I guess, used to I am that, you know, I can kind of go wherever in Canada and uh, pretty much like I'll be good with just my main chip and pin credit card. It's rare when I I go to a place where like, oh, sorry, only debit or only cash or whatever. Usually they're pretty open to all kind of payment methods. So that is a luxury. Honestly, that is a privilege. So when I went to the States and, you know, it was like a struggle to find, you know, a place to eat. And that it would accept my payment method. I was just like gobsmacked. It was just insane. That's crazy. Okay, so let's 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 start from the beginning and go all the way to Vegas. You can just briefly uh, talk about uh, various bits, the ones that were the most uh, important. <laughs> Otherwise, we could probably be here for for a whole couple of hours. Yeah, we'd we'll be here uh, <laughs> for a full seven days if you want the full recap. That's right. Um, so, sure. and, and you have videos, right? People can go and watch all the videos, yeah. the recaps of the of the days, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, that was kind of part of the challenge as well, is not only to complete the race and do all the challenges and go to all the checkpoints that we had to go to, but uh, we had a vlog every single day to kind of, well, A, it was, it was also just like a way for us to document our journeys, which was really cool, but it was just, it was, it was really fun for me. It gave me something extra to do because, you know, I was on my own. You don't want to get lonely or anything. So kind of like filming yourself and having this kind of camera with you you almost felt like you were I don't know not so alone I don't know that's just my perspective on it so I actually kind of liked filming it gave me kind of like a little more sense of purpose instead of just just desperation it's like um, there's another person with you yeah, even though you it was just like you a little cameraman following <laughs> you or something like that which the is internet. actually quite nice yeah exactly. the future the so, future internet is <laughs> the people that we're going to see this as witnesses to this exactly. uh, occasion Exactly. And it was just cool for people to also see uh, what I specifically went through, because some people probably wouldn't even like believe like (laughs) what I went through. So yeah, so that's all on my YouTube channel, jessicamorehouse.com slash YouTube is where you can find all that stuff. But so the race started with us uh, all uh, converging at Cybos in Toronto. So that was nice for me because I live in Toronto. So I just had to like take the uh, subway there. But once we were there, we were given a little bit more details about what to expect in the race. And then we were all given, um, basically, you know, all of us were handed a piece of paper that had our first challenge on it. And then we were kind of like, there was like a bit of a, all right, get, you know, ready, get set, go. And then everyone just ran away. And I was like, ah, and I didn't run away. Cause I'm like, Whoa, I'm going to read this paper. Cause I don't even know why I'm running. That's right. <laughs> and so on my piece of paper, it said, uh, my first challenge was to go to Cincinnati in Ohio. Ohio. And I didn't even know, like, this is how bad my like American geography is. Had no idea where Cincinnati was. Oh, okay. I <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was in Ohio. Uh, I had to go to Cincinnati. I had to buy uh, an Ohio hat. I had to 
said Ohio on it. Um, and then I had to go to a place in downtown Cincinnati called Fountain Square. And then I had to purchase lunch. And then I had to basically take a picture and film me with all of this these elements to complete that challenge. So wearing, so like, okay. wearing the hat or... or uh, I had to wear the hat. I had to eat, eat lunch. lunch. I had to be in Fountain Square in Cincinnati and uh, document that I, I did it. And uh, all and of, of it course, purchased I could, with chip and pin. Yes. Yeah. I can only purchase everything uh, in order to complete that challenge with chip and pin. So I'm like, okay, sure. And so I started to panic because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never done anything like this. I'm a pre-planner when it comes to travel. Yeah. Like I, I plan the heck out of it like months in advance so doing something on the fly like this and and for me too i was uh well besides uh i guess emily um we were the only two that had never done anything like this whereas uh jordan ash and Stu had done the previous race so they kind of had a little bit of an idea of what to do what to expect how to uh take care of things so and that was just in june right yeah that was recently so it wasn't that even was back like a year ago it, it was no it was re- i can't imagine recently. Yeah, I know. I can imagine trying to do another race just a few months after the first race. Uh, But yeah, that one was a bit different because it was only three days and they only had one challenge, which was to get to London to Copenhagen. So it wasn't as crazy as this one. Uh, But still, they had a little bit of a leg up uh, in terms of that. So first, I, of course, I'm like, okay, well, I'll call a travel agent. Maybe they can help me out, book, book a flight. I could use ship and pin. Um, I called like three travel agents. They all said, you know, first off, a flight would cost like five hundred dollars because it's so last minute, even though it's like a really short flight. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, sorry, yeah, no, if you wanted to come to our office and pay chip and pin, we don't accept chip and pin. We only only accept swipe, which was ridiculous because I was still in Canada. Yeah, at you're that point. you're at home where you yeah. you have this pr- privilege of being able to to exactly. use chip and pin everywhere. Uh, yeah. So that was shocking. So I uh, made my way to Union Station um, because honestly, I've never taken a uh, bus uh, anywhere. But I thought I'm like, I think they come out of Union Station. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) Well, the go train bus does. uh, But uh, regular Greyhound buses do not. There's a Greyhound station uh, kind of near Young and Dundas Square. Yeah, Bay and Dundas. So, yeah. yeah, So some nice lady from uh, Union Square or Union Station told me to go there. (laughs) Took a cat. Took a cab because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm wasting so much time running around. They took chip and pins. So that was nice. Went to Greyhound, bought a bus ticket to Cincinnati, of course. And then I'm like, wait, how long is this bus? And how it was long? like 14 hours. Oh, no. Yeah, something like that. 12 hours, 14 hours. Yeah, awful. Like I, I left at 7 30 um, p.m. in Toronto and I got to Cincinnati at 10 a.m. So, you know, a lot of people listening have probably been on a Greyhound. And yeah are really feeling for you right now because mm-hmm. 14 hours on a, on a Greyhound bus to Cincinnati. And it, and it wasn't just like one bus, just like no. relax. It's like there was basically it was from uh, Toronto to Buffalo. And then there was like a three hour layover at like midnight. And crossing then from the Buffalo. Yeah. Crossing the border, then Buffalo to uh, Cleveland, then Cleveland to Columbus, then Columbus to Dayton, then oh, Dayton to what? Cincinnati. I was like, "You're not done yet." That not this... done yet. Yeah, oh, I went for a while. Uh, um, yeah. I, you mentioned, uh, you know, five hundred dollars would be the cost of the flight. Yeah. Uh, what was your budget? Oh yeah, so we were all given a budget of uh fifteen hundred pounds that converts to like two thousand USD or twenty five hundred Canadian. Um, so that so I was very conscious of that, and that's kind of why I decided to take the bus. Also, I you know I could have just gone to the airport and tried to buy a ticket there with chip and pin. I'm sure it would have been fine, but uh, I didn't want to spend like you know a good chunk of my budget with one trip because I knew there's still seven more days. We were kind of, uh, you know, hinted at that we would need to make our ways to the Grand Canyon. So I knew I needed to kind of, um, you know, make my way over there. So I didn't want to spend all my money. So the bus, I think itself cost me maybe like 150 bucks. Okay. Total. I mean, you got to so You got to get there somehow. So it's like, yeah, it sounds like it would be the cheapest way other than hitchhiking, which would have been yeah. very dangerous, I'm sure. Yeah. And no. almost impossible to get your in, in a timely manner. Exactly. So yeah, the bus was definitely the best way. But I mean, after this trip, I'm like, I don't think I'm ever taking Greyhound bus (laughs) again. I mean, I didn't really realize what the whole it's like a whole different world there. Like I'm telling you some of the bus stations we went to, I'm like, what is going on right now? And to be fair, it's like we were getting there at like midnight. 4 a.m. So it's a different situation than daytime, I'm sure. But yeah, like some of these bus stops were like actually scary. And I'm so thankful that uh for most of the trip 
uh, I was with the other racers. So we kind of, uh, you know, hung out together, protected each other. Cause there is no way I would do that as a, you know, a woman on my own. There's just oh, no, no way it's just so not safe. Well, traveling overnight is, is on a Greyhound is not the safest thing, but just think, yeah. you know, in the future when someone's like, Hey, you want to take a two hour Greyhound to London? You'll be like, yeah, no problem. I've, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've yeah, done it's like, it, if it's right? a short bus trip, that's fine. It's or, easy, right? Yeah, but still, for me, I, you know, I always you talk about, uh, you know, you know, in terms of spending, there's, you know, don't feel bad about spending because I'm very frugal by nature. But I've kind of come to, you know, the viewpoint of, you know, it's okay to spend money on your values. Well, I value comfort and convenience, so I don't <laughs> yes. think I'll ever. I'll always spend more for like a convenient flight somewhere than a, a cheaper uh, bus somewhere. And no then way. and then buy <laughs> buy craft dinner when you get to the destination, right? Yeah, uh, instead exactly. of going out for a steak. Yeah. So exactly. you all went to somewhere in Ohio, but not yeah. to the same city. Yeah, we so all went Columbus to different places. And Cleveland. Places. Yeah, there? there's uh, a few people that went to. Uh, I think so. Jordan uh, and Ash, I think, went to Cleveland. Stu went to Columbus with Emily, and then I was the only one with Cincinnati, which was the furthest destination. Interesting. Okay, so yeah. you, you got there. You uh, you got your Ohio hat. You you got yeah. The, the photo. I got my Ohio hat. Went to CVS. They accepted chip and pin. Luckily, um, I had a real tough time trying to find food. And at that point, I hadn't slept in like twelve hours. Yeah. Like I tried to sleep on the bus, but it wasn't. So I uh, found a hotel really close by the Westin, not a, the cheapest hotel, but I was so tired. I'm like, I do not care. And, um, got a hotel room, took a nap, then came outside, went to subway. They accepted chip and pin, uh, and then completed my challenge and then went back to my hotel to, uh, just, uh, I, well, it, the thing is once you are kind of done, you still have to spend time, uh, to edit all of the footage you've done of and course. send it to the team and then upload it yourself. So it wasn't like I could r really relax. Wow. It's just uh, go, go, go. Right? It was go, go, go for seven days. So what was the next, yeah. next challenge then after that? The next challenge we got in the morning and I was able to uh, accomplish it that morning, which is great. It was to send a piece of mail or a letter to someone in Singapore. Um, okay, that's random. So yeah, super random, but it's because the, you know, this is called the money 2020 payments race money, 2020, the conference will be taking place in Singapore next year. I see. Yeah. And so that was kind of the whole thinking of that. So I just went on Facebook. I'm like, Hey, does anyone know someone that lives in Singapore? And <laughs> I, I think actually I had a lot of post, people. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people were like, Oh yeah, I know someone. So this guy who was actually, I, I know through a friend who is a year below me in film school. Uh, he knew someone who lived in Singapore. So he connected me with that person, mailed him something. I got help from the um, hotel staff and then I was on my way. I just needed to find a, a ride to the airport. And you could pay for all that through your hotel, I suppose. Uh, uh, with the well, actually pin? she was nice enough to just do it for me. She had the envelope. I, I took like a piece of paper, wrote something on it and she said she would, she'd mail it after work for me. So she really? actually, uh, well, yeah, that, isn't that, that nice? That can't yeah, be, she was really uh, nice. cheap. I mean, I'm sure it's not that expensive to, if you're just mailing a, a piece of paper. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that was super nice. You know, uh, yeah. it's, I'm uh, very interested uh, in how much kindness was, uh, especially, you know, if you, uh, yeah. I'll be talking to Emily uh, as well. Yeah. And, and she, I think she had to rely on a little bit more kindness because of the she lack did. of Yeah. For me, I, yeah, I didn't want to kind of, like I, I asked for favors when I needed it to, but I really did want to try my best to use my payment method sure. because it's like, it, it isn't like, oh, I only have gold or Bitcoin where no one accepts that, yes. where you really do have to rely on the kindness of strangers. It's like, well, most people will be like, well, can't you just use your credit card? <laughs> so I tried my best to actually use that. But in terms of trying to get to the airport, I knew there wasn't going to be any method, you know, that would accept a uh, chip and pin. So when I kind of got out there. I saw this nice looking man who was clearly waiting for his car. And I'm like, are you going to the airport? He's like, yeah. I'm like, can I get a ride? He's oh, like, nice. and I had like my camera. I told him the whole spiel. He's like, yeah, sure. That's fine. So I got a free ride with him. But then of course, like once I got to the airport, like I discovered soon, not one airline in the, I think it was like the Cincinnati slash Northern Kentucky airport. It was weird. It's actually in Kentucky. That is um, strange. I thought that was yeah. very strange when you said that. Uh, you yeah. Know, how, yeah. I look their at the, airport is actually in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. It's so bizarre. So I'm like, okay. But yeah, not one airline or one food stall except a chip and pin. So I was starving. I was freaking out. Uh, again, I went to Facebook to see if anyone could help me. And luckily I found uh, Kate Flanders, uh, the blogger, uh, who's also a friend oh, that's of mine. So she, nice. 
she bought me a flight to uh, Denver, Colorado, and and that is allowed in the the rules as long as you pay that person back with your payment method, which I did because we were roommates at FinCon. After, did they so tell I, you I this for... at the beginning? They they told yeah, you these yeah. rules. There, there's some workarounds because they knew it's like, well, we can't you know you can't starve and be like stranded somewhere. So there is some kind of workaround. Like I'll buy you a hat at this store next door. Yeah, to the restaurant. yeah, and I I did actually yeah. try to get a, a stranger to buy me a flight, and I was going to buy so, uh, him something at the electronic store because they sure. accepted shipping pin but uh it fell through it was gonna be so it would have been so epic but yeah he was tr- trying to buy me a flight with some of his uh points but he didn't have enough and he, he was a musician just traveling he didn't have he was kind of cash strapped he was waiting for a check so he couldn't buy me a flight but he was gonna he was gonna so we have wi-fi on flights we have the ability to buy pretty much anything with a swipe credit card but we mm-hmm. still don't have chip and pin in airports. I know. Or doesn't make it, like one. Starbucks didn't even accept it. It was it was unreal. That's, and so yeah. so luckily got a flight, went through security, and I'm like, okay, there's gotta be some place that it has, you know, a food place that uh, accepts chip and pin. I went to this one and there, he's like, No, like literally I've been working here for years, not one place accepts chip and pin. I'm like, Will you will you give me some free food? He's Please like, give me no. Food. no. He's like, oh. No. <laughs> I'm what like, a I'm jerk. so hungry. I know. <laughs> like, I'm so hungry. He's just doing real his desperate. job, uh, I guess. But, I uh, know. And so, yeah, the only place there that was someplace I could hang out and had some sort of food was there's this AAA members area. Okay. They always have kind of, you know, members areas like lounge, in the airports. Right? I think, yeah. yeah, it's a lounge. And uh, I paid $40. They accepted chip and pin and just hung out there for like six hours. And all they had for like food was like apples, carrots, chips, beer, and, and nothing substantial. That, this is because you were at the Cincinnati, Kentucky airport. Yeah. Because yeah, if you would have sure. paid $40 to get into, say, you know, one at, in Tel Aviv, you would yeah. be like eating a buffet, which would. Yeah, uh, probably. You know, probably. So that's, yeah. All they little... had was like cup of soup. Kind of yeah. Thing. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, yeah, well, that, that's not good. OK, so you got on the you got on the flight. That you, yeah, you I figured traded, that out. Got on my flight. Traded it was with Kate flight. Flanders. Yeah, <laughs> so she, she, yeah, and I uh, went to. Uh, There's a stopover in Chicago, and then right. from Chicago to Denver. Happily, I got off. I had like an hour layover, and McDonald's accepted chip and pin. So I finally stuffed my face. I was oh, literally man. dying. Wow. Yeah. But I felt immediately, you know, well, on the McDonald's flight. is so good at first. And then 30 minutes later, you're like, oh, that was a mistake. On the flight that <laughs> you, you you had some snacks on the flight? Uh, there was nothing on the flight. No, but like, like I, so I, so pretzels? basically I just survived on like a protein bar and chips throughout the day. Oh man. Uh, and then at night I had McDonald's for dinner. And, yes. And uh, then you're right. It yeah. is a, a bit of regrettable, especially yeah. if you eat a lot of it. And, yeah. and, you know, in the States, McDonald's is slightly different. It really is. Um, yeah. I find it because we're not used to it. And they, they make things different. Everything's from different places, too. Yeah. And the ingredients yeah. and all of the regulations. So I think it's different food and we're not used to it. Yeah, so, it could be it. Yeah, my stomach was not happy with me. But uh, it you, filled my belly, uh, gave me enough energy to make it to Denver. And then from Denver, I got a ride with another blogger friend, Michelle, from uh, Michelle's Money Hungry, who picked me up from um, kind of the train station in downtown Denver. And she drove me to this uh, lady Heidi's house, who was nice enough to uh, let me sleep in her basement. <laughs> this is all connections <laughs> that you had. You you, you kind of pre Well, I didn't this. actually know Heidi. She was following the race reached out to the race organizer to say hey i live in denver if anyone wants a place to crash they can crash in my place so i'm like yeah i'll stay at the stranger's house <laughs> that's a, that's amazing so do you have a goal do you have a next task in denver then uh yeah i think it was fairly easy what was it i think that day it was just you had to film yourself talking about uh you know one of your past failures how you learn from it so it was like super easy okay i didn't okay. have to find anything i didn't have to go anywhere so i did that pretty pretty easily um you know after you know Heidi was nice enough to like take me out for lunch and feed me I met up with my friend Michelle we got my uh self a place to stay for that night and just kind of like she just toured me around Denver which was lovely awesome well, yeah so yeah day three was awesome day four was also pr- fairly awesome because uh again I I don't know what the challenge for that day was I think it was another easy one um I can't remember. Uh, but basically, uh, I just I, I booked my flight to Las Vegas for that night because I knew, OK, from Vegas, then I will go to the. Grand- oh, maybe that was it. Like the next you know, thing was get to yourself to the Grand just Canyon, get to the Grand Canyon. OK. And uh, and to get that flight to Las Vegas and, uh, you know, a trip to the Grand Canyon, I got, again, another blogger friend. I relied heavily on my blogger friends, uh, Barry Choi from uh, Money We Have. He bought me a flight 
to Las Vegas from Denver, which only cost forty dollars, which is Barry. Glorious. That's so awesome. Yeah. And what would yeah. you would you get for Barry? Uh, I I don't know. I haven't paid him back yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, is this, are you following uh, I was gonna the rules? buy him whatever he needs. He has a new baby, so I'm like, I'll buy you whatever yes. you want for your baby. Of course. Um, yeah. Um. Well, that's awesome, of Barry. Yeah, yeah. He, he so he bought me a flight to Vegas. He also bought me a bus trip to the Grand Canyon. So basically, I was all covered. So. Um, you know, that day, cause I had a nighttime flight, me and Michelle just, uh, she you know, drove me around to Red Rocks in Colorado, which was very cool. Kind of remind me of like the Flintstones. Um, and then she, uh, we drove to Boulder, Colorado, really cute town and, uh, you know, went out for brunch and just like had a really good time. And then I, I flew to Las Vegas. Okay. And, uh, yeah. so then, so Grand Canyon, uh, then yeah so the next day so I, I got to las vegas at like midnight uh and i got a free ride from the guy who sat next to me on the flight to give give me a ride to my hotel you just told nice your story you, yeah you, i told you're, my you're story you're basically like, telling your story as you go yeah and people are responding well to it exactly exactly and i think they're just like oh this poor girl <laughs> she looks really <laughs> tired and hungry uh which is true um and so yeah he gave me a free ride like you know just like hopped into his cab and it was kind of on the way he was going to the strip anyway i was staying at the um oh and i also got a hotel which I was able to pre-book um because they did take chip and pin so that was nice okay um, good yeah so that was so that was a win stayed at the uh the mirage which is a yeah actually a fairly nice hotel um and but then I, I get you know to the hotel at like midnight i fall asleep and then i have to wake up 5 a.m to catch my uh 16 hour bus trip to the grand canyon oh man <laughs> another <laughs> another like mistake in my book oh yeah well yeah. greyhound again a great well no it wasn't a greyhound it was like bus? a specific tour bus oh, and okay. like overall like it was absolutely the best uh you know way to see the grand canyon everyone else was smarter than me and took a helicopter ride to be oh. fair though if i had done that i know i would have actually gone over budget because i did spend more than most of these people they lived on buses the whole time i took flights and i stayed at hotels because okay. i need you know i needed to yeah um so actually this was probably like the cheapest best method for me but because i took so long because you know it was great seeing the grand canyon but we were actually delayed uh two hours getting back to las vegas because there is an accident on the road and we had to like turn back and go a different route and that added two hours onto our journey oh, so it should have no. actually been a 14 hour i believe uh journey but it was 16 hours or something like that so because okay. of that you know uh basically after we did that last challenge going to grand canyon taking a selfie with it in the background um we had to go to the venetian where uh the money 2020 conference was go to finastra's uh booth in the convention center and uh, then then that was kind of like the finish line but i was the last one to get there so i knew okay i definitely didn't win i don't know what place i got but mm -hmm. i definitely didn't win so that was a bit like that was a bit heartbreaking because I like I really I was like in the lead throughout the whole race. But yeah, that one last decision kind of. Uh, so it was really it me. really comes down to the the last thing. And it did. But, I know. So I'm kicking myself for that. But whatever. It, winning <laughs> there, there is no prize for this. Right. It's no, it's, I think there's like prestige. a trophy. You get the glory. You get the prestige. And I think there is a trophy. Um, But yeah, you don't get like, a, you know, a big cash prize or anything like the, that. The it was main... more just like you just like when you're like literally just doing the race for seven days near the end, you're like, yeah, I want to win. <laughs> I guess you do. Right? But yeah. the, the idea of uh, the main premise is can this be done right can yeah you know and and uh it, it you know it's it's not you're able to buy everything with chip and pen but you're able to use your network and yeah you know it kind of uh it to me it says uh, hey you know there's a benefit in having a a, a big social network and, yeah. be, and being kind to strangers yeah and <laughs> having negotiation skills right people yeah. don't realize the value of all this stuff and you know when you need it uh yeah. it comes in handy like uh I guess Emily got there first then she got there first. Cause she, uh, took a helicopter ride, uh, to the grand Canyon. <laughs> and I guess was like the, the first one to kind of finish her ride. Cause Stu also took a helicopter ride, but maybe his was just a little bit later in the day. And Stu actually, Oh, sorry, not Stu Ash rather. He went to the grand Canyon actually a day early, which was really funny because then our, our race organizer was like, it doesn't count. You have to be there on the Monday. No. You can't be there. Either. So what he did was he, um, he, I, you'll probably find out more of the story from him, but yeah. I know he, uh, went there and he stayed there past midnight. So it was, it did flow into the next day. And then <laughs> I, I, I guess he took a bus or I don't know how he got back to Las Vegas, but I do remember hearing that he had to sleep in a Starbucks. <laughs> 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'll get that story from him for sure. Oh God, the poor guy. So he, so yeah, in the end I did not win. I got fourth place right above a contactless Jordan. Um, but they were actually were only fifth because, um, he had to pull out of the race. He couldn't finish it. So really I'm sort of last, but Oh, wow. I'll get get that story from Jordan too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, so the race is done and you're just the race is decompressing. Done. I got a full, like real meal of like oh, proper food. Nice. That was glorious. I got to shower. I got to take like an epic nap. I got to stay in the Venetian. That was lovely. It was like a huge sweet. So I just got to kind of finally decompress and get and, and not feel like I'm in race mode. And yeah. it was funny because right after, because I'm a crazy person, I flew to Dallas, Texas to go to FinCon. As you know, I you were there. there yeah. You saw me there. Um, and it was funny. There was like one night where I like woke up in a sweat being like, oh my God, do I have to check out of this hotel soon? Am I still in the race? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> You look, when I saw you, I think you were just coming down for registration, I think. You look yeah, so, probably. well, it was early in the morning, but you were so exhausted looking. Like, I was absolutely just like, out of my mind. I'm I'm ready to just take a nap, but uh, oh, yeah. you had a panel to be on that day, I think, or then maybe. Oh, the yeah, that's day. why. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten up that early. But yeah, I had to yeah. register and then I had a panel. I was going to go to Kate Flanders' panel because she's my roommate, so I had to go there. <laughs> um, and I think hers was at like 8.30 or something crazy early, and then mine was at 10. 10 30. Wow. So I had to be up. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. What a crazy experience. Yeah. So those two weeks were literally like the craziest of my life. Absolutely. Like in this year, like insane. So, uh, you know, I was talking about sort of lessons learned. Do you have any specific mm-hmm. things that you learned or about oh, yourself definitely. or like, you know, a lesson definitely. to share with people? Yeah. I, like the main reason I said yes to this race and I told a lot of people and they're like, Oh, I'd never do that. Or, Oh, I got that email and I thought it was spam. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to do it because it scared me and not scared me and like, oh my gosh, this sounds dangerous. I'm like, it scared me in that. I'm like, that sounds like it'll really make me do stuff that make me feel uncomfortable. But that also excited me because I know from past experience, when I usually put myself in a situation where I have to, you know, there's a bit of fight or flight, you have to really test yourself and see, you know, what you'll do. I've always grown out of that. I mean, you know, a big thing for me, it was like moving from Vancouver to Toronto, no job, no friends, no nothing with my husband and, and making it work. And that literally has changed our lives. Like we're different people, we're better people, we're stronger. And so I knew this would be kind of another kind of sense of that. So I I did it mainly for personal growth. I knew I would get a ton out of it personally. It would be a great way to test my, you know, resilience. And also like just me now being self-employed, I work from home. I'm pretty comfortable. I got a a cushy gig. I don't have to leave my house sometimes. So I don't really do anything too adventurous or crazy. So, and I also am a huge fan of the amazing race. So this kind of seemed like the amazing race. So I'm like, okay, it sounds terrifying. I need to do it. I need to prove to myself that I am capable and uh, I can do it because this is literally something I would never do. It's very outside of my comfort zone. So that's why I did it. And in the end, yeah, that's exactly what I got out of it. I felt stronger, more powerful, more confident, um, independent. I felt like, oh, yeah, I got this. Whatever I used to worry about a few months ago, little things, literally doesn't matter. It definitely puts put things into perspective on like what's important and just you, you kind of get a bigger picture about, you know, getting out of your little bubble and seeing the world in a different uh, set of eyes. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I think everyone should do that. And, and, you, and you got a great story out of it, too. And, really good uh, story. So, <laughs> and I made some really great friends from all the other racers. Well, yeah, the racers and just people you meet along the way. And you learn, learn about the kindness of strangers. And people can go to your YouTube channel. People can go mm-hmm. to jessicamorehouse.com, right? Yeah. And, and find uh, out more about your whole, if they want to watch the whole detail, you have, would you have one video per day? Uh, yeah, so I've got one video per day and then I just put out uh, a race and review video where I kind of go through um, some things I haven't shared and just like my final thoughts on the race in general. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for being on the show and uh, for being the first uh, of the of the five. I, I, I <laughs> hope I get all five. Uh, you know, no one's yeah. refused me yet. I haven't uh, got a hold of Emily yet, so she's the only one who can actually refuse me. But everyone else is uh, <laughs> is a, is agreed to uh, to talk to me about their part of the race and their payment yeah. method and their their challenges. So thanks for yeah. being the first one, and and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. For sure. Thanks for having me.
In case you're wondering, Jessica did eventually pay Barry back. If you want all the details about Jessica's payment race journey, you can find them at jessicamorehouse.com slash YouTube. Next week on The Personal Finance Show, I have another payments racer, Emily Aras, who actually won the race using only Bitcoin as a method of payment. How did she pull this off? You'll have to tune in next week to find out. If you enjoy listening to The Personal Finance Show, please show your support by subscribing and leaving a review on iTunes. No time for a review? Just leave me a star rating. It takes two seconds on iTunes. Investwisely.ca is where you can find all of the show notes and links and, of course, all of my blog posts. I'd love to hear from you, so please feel free to send me an email at bow at investwisely.ca.